We're here at the Farnborough Air Show 2022. It's been a long time since the last Farnborough Air Show, Adrian. Um, what does Open Mind hope to get out of this, uh, this show? Well, I think we're going to try and meet um, our existing customers. So we haven't seen them or some of the aerospace customers for a long time uh, now because of the obviously lockdown. Um, and obviously new prospects, new customers, uh, network. Um, yeah, really show the industry what Hypermill is um, capable of doing. Exactly. And you guys haven't had, you've had four years out of the game of, of just this farmer show being open. And what do you think about the aerospace sector that, that Open Mind can, can offer to them so much? What technology have you got that you can offer them? Yeah, okay, so the aerospace industry really is, let's say for, for us, a little bit of a conservative marketplace. So we do have a lot of great tech um, that we can, we can show them um, really how to be super competitive in this, in this um, marketplace now. Um, new ways of doing things, um, doing things, existing things faster, um, with more stability, it's fitting into their digital um, chain of, of manufacturing. So yeah, a lot to show them. Because it's not just about ripping out material as quick as possible, it's about the whole, the high level manufacturing operations. Because once you've optimized the process, you then have to take a step above and, and make sure that the whole line of components being made is, is being managed in the right way. Um, do you, th can you, can you show us a little bit about what you're exhibiting here and what you're trying to show with these parts, please? Sure, um, I think what we're trying to show is a, really a bit of a cross platform of, of different types of um, components. So let's start with these, let's say, traditional structural parts, the, these sort of parts here. So you can see we've got an example here, which is obviously it's just a small piece, but what we're showing here is these real deep pockets. So traditionally we're seeing now in, in the marketplace um, a number of part components being merged together. So they become more complex and this has got quite a lot of curvature on there. So it's not just a simple three plus two type component. Deep pockets, very small radiuses in the corner. Um, so these are, can be quite a challenge. So here we're using barrel tool technology. So barrel tool technology to, to scan this face. So we're not cutting this with a ball mill. It's curved, so um, it's a challenge. And then we're using some nice technology to get in the corners to rip this material out very quickly. Brilliant. And barrel milling has been a big part of Hypermill for, for quite a while now. And that helps you, um, like you say, you can't quite see the, the complex curves on this part at first glance. When you really dig into it, you see actually, oh wow, that's really hard. That's a, a really hard part to machine, just like you say with the three plus two kind of process. Uh, what other parts are you, are you showing off here? Yeah, to continue on that um, sort of barrel tool technology, so we actually use barrel tools on these parts as well. So this is you know, a completely different type of uh, component. So you can see here, um, traditionally this would be either um, machined through uh, like a lens type tool. And as you, as you go over the leading and trailing edge, um, the part moves really very quickly or the machine moves very quickly. So it usually damages the, um, the, the leading and trailing edge here. So we're using a, like a, a barrel type, type, type of technology coming from a different angle. So the machine is uh, more stable, um, the, the higher part quality around the leading and trailing edges. And of course you can machine this blade a lot quicker than you can do if you're trained, say using a, a ball mill or other types of technology. That's interesting because you wouldn't really consider that uh, the orientation in which you machine uh, a part would change where there are mismatches and, and uh, reversal uh, marks and whatnot. So it's interesting to see that, I guess you'd, you'd have a C-axis movement like that with a ball nose, whereas if you were with a barrel, it's kind of kicked off and instead the barrel is just going around the blade like that. Yeah, certainly. I mean, just, just because you have a five-axis machine doesn't mean you should make it dance around. It's, it's about keeping the machine as stable as, pos as possible. And you really want to move those five axes as, li as little as possible. Yes, really. So uh, if you can keep the machine stable, then the part quality comes, comes higher. Um, less movement on the machine means you probably can push it faster, more material removal. There's lots of benefits. Brilliant. Exactly. As you say, like the leading and training edge is really important to to keep those a nice smooth finish because those really affect the airflow around it. OK, so we've been going quite a while. Let's just let's skip um, the difficult, this kind of this really interesting vein part here, but we'll talk a little bit more about kind of the future of where you see manufacturing going maybe a little bit. So obviously there's additive here and it's been kind of coming for a long time additive. Do, where, do you think it's, it's, it's here for general production or do you think we're still, it's still only in very specific cases of additive is, is a useful uh, technology? It's coming fast now. So um, we've had technology for probably more than 12 years or so uh, in, with Hypermill. So um, we can you know, additive and we can also subtract so we can add and, and take away materials. So these type of components we can build in five axis. So this is a, a additive um, five axis component. And you can see you can get very close to the net shape with um, building material. And then we could machine it afterwards on, on the same machine or a different machine. So this becomes really, really quite interesting because 
then you, when you create a net shape like this, you sometimes then have to, let's say, manipulate it on a machine tool to fit the existing stock condition, uh, the, the actual part itself. So we do, we do have a lot of best fit operations to manipulate these um, parts on, uh, on, on the machines and get them into, into good condition. And I guess the SMEs who want to start taking on, uh, taking on processes like this will need the backup of your software to help them make, this, uh, make these kind of parts as easy as possible. Absolutely, and it, it's not just about building. And there's quite a lot of things in the background that you know the, the, the different operations on the uh, different uh, power and, uh, and ways you build material. There's lots of strategies needed, and we have a, a huge portfolio of different cycles now to actually enable you to build them. How you how you lace the material, how you build it up, is really really important for structural integrity of the part. Um, there's a lot of let's say hidden things that in, in this additive world that are let's say a little bit different to normal um, component machining. So Open Mind has got some fantastic technology to help the aerospace sector. Uh, come and check them out. We've got another couple of days at Farnborough Air Show um, 2020 team.